In this unit, we will go through material properties available for semiconductor materials used by the charge solver. Material properties are accessible in two ways. First, directly through material database, and second, through the object tree after being added to the simulation from material database. Since the material added to the object tree is a copy of the material existing in material database, it is always recommended to make changes to material properties from the object tree rather than from material database. This way, the original material properties will remain unchanged and also the changes made to the material properties will be considered by the solver immediately. Otherwise, the material has to be added to the object tree again after the changes have been made in the material database. Every semiconductor material defined in a charge transfer simulation should have a series of electronic properties specified. The first property is DC permittivity, which is the permittivity of the material under DC or zero frequency condition. In a semiconductor, the work function describes the energy cost of removing an electron from the intrinsic energy level, the Fermi energy of the on dop semiconductor, and placing it at vacuum energy level. The conduction band of semiconductors can have several valleys, and by default, the lowest value is enabled for each semiconductor in the material database. For each value, a different set of semiconductor properties can be specified and by default only those from the lowest value are used. The user can choose to change this by picking between the L, X or Gamma value. To account for the influence of the crystal lattice potential of the semiconductor, electrons and holes can be approximated as free charges with an effective mass relative to the electron rest mass that can depend on the electronic band structure of the material. In device, the effective mass is treated as a parameter of the material model. In addition, the variation in the effective mass as a function of temperature can be accounted for with a quadratic model. A key physical property of the material is the band gap, which describes the energy difference between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band. In device, the band gap energy is treated as a parameter of the material model. The temperature dependent variation in the band gap is accounted for with a universal empirical model. The intrinsic carrier concentration is calculated from the effective mass and band gap and is only displayed in the material database for reference. When impurities are added to the intrinsic or pure semiconductor, localized allowed energy states may be introduced at energies that lie within the band gap. In the case of dopants, these impurity states will exist with energies near the conduction or valence band edges such that the dopants readily ionize at moderate temperatures. When the concentration of dopants is large, these discrete states will begin to merge and form a thin band of allowed states within the band gap, effectively narrowing the band gap. This can be viewed as a narrowing of the band gap or an increase in the effective density of states. The slot boom model for band gap narrowing is provided in device to account for this effect. The mobility parameter is the physical link between the motion of carriers, electrons and holes and the semiconductor material. The mobility can be viewed as a measure of how easily electrons and holes can move through the crystal lattice of the semiconductor. In the absence of any interactions with the lattice, impurities, or other carriers, electrons and holes would move freely in the periodic potential of the lattice. Interactions that change the momentum of the carriers are termed scattering events. Different types of scattering events contribute to the variation in mobility of the electrons and holes, including lattice scattering, ionized and neutral impurity scattering, and carrier-carrier scattering. In addition, the velocity of the carriers is observed to saturate at high fields. Each of these scattering mechanisms can be modeled in device by applying the appropriate models. The fundamental process that impedes the free motion of the carriers in the lattice is thermal scattering off of the lattice itself. The mobility due to lattice scattering is treated as a basic input into the device semiconductor model and may be entered as a constant value 
or with a temperature dependence described by the universal temperature model. Many models exist to account for the influence of impurities on the carrier mobility. Device provides support for three common models with a wide range of applications. The Kage-Thomas model, the Massetti model, and the Clausen model. Each model requires a variety of coefficients and their default values are provided in material database for most common semiconductors. For general modeling purposes, the Kage-Thomas or Massetti models are often sufficient and coefficients are available for multiple semiconductor materials. The Clausen model is primarily tuned for silicon at room temperature and coefficients for other materials are not available. At moderate doping densities, the mobility predicted by our models reduces to that of the Kage-Thomas model. To account for extremely large doping concentrations, the Massetti model can be selected, which adds a correction to the Kage-Thomas model for large doping values. The mobility model proposed by Clausen can be used to account for the aforementioned doping effects at moderate and high concentrations as well as the influence of carrier-carrier scattering. As the electric field within the semiconductor increases, the drift velocity of the carriers is commonly observed to saturate, reducing the mobility accordingly. To account for this effect, device includes high-field mobility models that describe the monotonic, silicon-like or overshoot gallium arsenide-like velocity saturation behavior. The driving field can be defined as the magnitude of the quasi-fermi level gradient, grad phi, or the component of the electric field in the direction of the current density, E dot J. The grad phi method is only valid when the charge transport within the material is close to one-dimensional. If the charge transport is 2D or 3D, or the device contains heterojunctions, the E dot J option should be used. The saturation velocity of the carriers in the material is also needed as an input for the models and can be temperature dependent. While the electrical material database contains models for many common semiconductors, it may be necessary to add new semiconductor materials for different systems. Here we describe how to set the parameters necessary for a minimal semiconductor model. A new semiconductor can be added to the material database by opening the material database and choosing the semiconductor option from the add button menu. The newly defined semiconductor can be named and a color can be chosen to represent the material in the layout. The basic properties that define the electronic behavior of a semiconductor include the relative dielectric permittivity, work function, conduction band value, effective mass and band gap. Each of these values may be entered as constants. Oftentimes, the effective density of states is known, while the effective mass is not. To convert from effective density of states to effective mass, please refer to the related link below. The minimum definition for a semiconductor material must also include a constant lattice scattering mobility for both the electrons and holes. These values can be entered as constants. A basic semiconductor model doesn't require recombination and generation models defined. These models will be the subject of the next video in this unit.